in the previous sessions uh, we have already discussed this particular technology by using three ccps one is the concept the next one is the container and then the process now in this session we will be will be dealing with the, the microbiology and spoilage uh, which is involved in canned food microbiology in especially in thermal processing is very important because actually the process itself is dependent entirely dependent upon the initial bacterial load it's like you know it is scientifically designed to target uh, certain microorganisms which can survive high temperature and pressure conditions so in depth study on the microbiological changes happening during the scanning process is very important so uh, before uh, approaching any food processing technology main objective is to limit uh, the growth of microorganisms in that food so as when we discuss the concept of this technology so if you present a nutritionally rich food uh, to the environment many organisms are interested uh, in consuming that food uh, food is generally a source of nutrients for all the living organisms because uh, since we are preparing this for the consumption of human beings we, we are considered as the consumers of this particular product so any other organisms uh, which is interested in consuming this product is considered as an hazard so our objective is to prevent the entry or the, the availability of this particular nutrients to any other macro or microorganisms other than human beings so uh, in the case of microorganisms the advantage is that we can uh, restrict their presence or their approach or their uh, availability of this nutrients by creating certain physical barriers around the food like for example uh, enclosed areas are there the container itself is there and other uh, biological hazard or macro hazard uh, control systems mechanisms are in place so we can control them but in the case of microorganisms uh, no physical barriers may be able to restrain them for approaching the food so we need to calculate certain processes we need to introduce certain different kinds of uh, physiochemical mechanisms or parameters into the food so that this uh, the entry of the microorganisms or the proliferation of microorganisms is constantly checked within the container or within the food packet so uh, first for uh, we already discussed that our, our main target is to control the microorganisms because since microorganisms are the primary reason for the, our food uh, getting spoiled so any other food like just like any other food that canned food products are also prone to spoilage given that uh, this microorganisms comes in contact with the the enclosed food so we need to prevent that so if we want to control any particular uh, group of organisms we need to understand the, their basic nature their classification their basic characteristic their uh, physiology their anatomy and uh, the conditions which uh, promote their growth and cons conditions which is going to limit their growth so all these informations are required so first approach will be to classify the microorganisms uh, or the classify the target organisms according to the various parameters so one of the basic uh, classification category or classification classification criteria is nutrition degradation capacity so what kind of nutrients they are interested in for example there are a like group of organisms called proteolytic microorganisms so proteolytic organisms are microorganisms which are capable of uh, protein degradation because of um, extracellular protein is produced they have a uh, proteolytic enzymes which is produced by those microorganisms which make them capable of uh, you know like uh, feeding on the protein source or utilizing the protein source available uh, in the food so there are protein loving microorganisms or proteolytic microorganisms and there are another group of lipolytic microorganisms lipolytic organisms are microbes which catalyze the hydrolysis of fats to fatty acids and glycerol so they can break down uh, the fat into fatty acids and glycerol and utilize that for their energy purposes so there is also saccharolytic microorganisms which can hydrolyze disaccharides or polysaccharides to simple sugars sugar loving microorganism like saccharolytic so there is also pectinolytic organism which uh, are the microorganism which can hydrolyze pectin which is a component of uh, plants so different kinds of uh, nutrition dependent microorganisms are there and also there are another category is that on basis of tolerance to different kinds of hurdles of processing there also we can classify the microorganisms like microorganism which can withstand the ph conditions uh, water activity low temperature high temperature certain gas preferences are there so these are also this uh, classification criteria is available and also basis on socio economic significance also we can uh, classify them as either spoilage microorganisms pathogenic microorganism or toxic microorganisms in the case of canning what are the processing conditions because uh, we are going to decide the target microorganisms based on the processing or preservation conditions that we are going to follow 
in a particular technology. So every pro processing or preservation technology is going to have a group of target microorganisms. So this target microorganism, how we, how we decide which organism is target is that, target microorganism just means that any microorganism which can overcome or which can tolerate or withstand the current preservation conditions. So that is called the target microorganism. So our primary objective is going to, uh, for this, uh, to limit the presence or uh, limit or uh, nullify the presence of these target microorganisms in our food products because the principle is that once we target the uh, target microorganism we can we are able to control the target microorganisms obviously other kind of microorganisms will be controlled because they are incapable of uh, surviving this uh, the presented uh, preservation condition so that is the principle behind this concept so in the case of canning what are the conditions available so canning uh, there is definitely according to the process we know that there is vacuum in the headspace so there is a it's a controlled uh, atmospheric conditions or vacuum is there and also it is also ph regulated food and uh, different kinds of ph conditions are also there and also high temperature and pressure these are so these are the processing conditions which is going to prevail in a canned food so uh, the type of mic microorganisms which can survive a canning technology or canning conditions are going to be those microorganisms which can survive in a vacuum atmosphere, which can survive in a pH regulated atmosphere, which can also survive high temperature and pressure conditions. Depending on the pH preference, uh, a group of microorganisms can be classified like either acidophiles, uh, neutrophiles or alkalophiles. So as the name indicates, acidophiles are the group of microorganisms which can survive or which prefer a pH range of 1 to 5 pH range and neutrophiles are uh, microorganisms which prefer a neutral pH range 6 to 8, that kind of 7.5 that range and alkalophiles are organisms from 8 and above that are alkaline conditions. So according to the pH preference we can classify organisms as uh, acidophiles, neutrophiles and alkalophiles. And also temperature, we, as we discussed temperature is one of the major uh, processing parameter that we are going to apply in the case of canning. So in the case of uh, the temperature preference also a different kinds of microorganisms are present. So for example, there are psychrophilic microorganisms or so psychrophiles which prefer a lower temperature like you know like zero, sub-zero uh, temperatures minus 5 to around 20 degrees Celsius. So they are the target microorganisms in the case of chilled and frozen uh, preservation technologies. So they are called psychrophiles and there are also mesophiles which prefer a higher temperature up to from 20, from 15 to 45 degrees Celsius. Mesophilic organisms are there. Then there are thermophilic microorganisms which prefer a degree, range of temperature from 45 to 80 degrees Celsius and also hyperthermophiles uh, which prefer a temperature from 65 to 150 or 105 degrees Celsius. So these are the a group of microorganisms or classification of microorganisms based on their thermal preferences. So psychrophiles prefer a low temperature, mesophiles, thermophiles and hyperthermophiles. Hyperthermophiles are basically organisms that we find in um, thermal vents and uh, like you know like that uh, kind of situations, high temperature situations. Uh, where natural thermal vents are there, in that temperature those kind of microorganisms are present. According to the canning technology is concerned or thermal pasteurization or thermal sterilization technology is concerned, both two groups such as mesophilic microorganisms and thermophilic microorganisms are going to be our uh, point of focus. And also, as I told, like uh, as we discussed, uh, in the case of canning technology, inside the container, inside the sealed container, uh, there is going to be vacuum. So there is going to be a restricted amount of oxygen present in the case of in the canned product. So there are kind of different kinds of microorganisms based on the preference of oxygen as well. For example, there are obligate aerobic organisms are there, they which require oxygen to survive. And there is also obligate anaerobes are there where they does not require oxygen to survive or presence of oxygen will kind of determine their growth, their obligate anaerobes. Then there is also facultative anaerobic microorganisms are there. Facultative micro anaerobic organisms are basically or uh, aerobic organisms but which can tolerate anaerobic condition to an extent. And also aerotolerant anaerobes are also there. Aerotolerant anaerobes are they are basically anaerobic microorganism but they can also tolerate aerobic conditions and there is also micro aerophiles organisms are there. They micro aerophiles are uh, the particular kind of organism they prefer a particular level of uh, presence of oxygen very at low levels of oxygen are required for their survival. So these are the various classification of uh, organisms uh, based on oxygen preferences. So uh, in the case of uh, canning conditions it is going to be a vacuum. So facultative anaerobes and obligate and uh, obligate anaerobes are going to be the organism that we need to be targeting in the case of canning technology. 
the canned products are going to are also classified on the base of pH. So as we know that there is a different kinds of pH ranges available. Alkaline pH is there from 8 to 11 and also neutral pH is there around range 7 6.5 to 7.5 that range and also acidic pH is there from 2 to around 6 uh, that range. So that is generally called as acidic range. So different kinds of foods are there in different uh, range. So generally in canning we classify the foods according to the pH. So there are different four categories of uh, pH classifications for the canned products. One is group one is low acid foods. Low acid foods means uh, they are having a pH more than uh, 5.3. So example they are called low acid foods. Example meat, fish, milk and vegetables and some of the vegetables comes under this category. And group, group 2 is medium acid foods which has a pH range between 4.5 to 5.3. Like for example, some meat preparations and veg vegetable mixes, soups, sauces, etc. comes under this category. And group 3 is acid foods uh, which have a pH range of 3.7 to 4.5. Uh, for example, canned tomato, syrups, uh, tomato, ketchups, pineapple, figs, uh, pears, fruits, etc. comes under this category. And group 4 is high acid foods uh, where pH is less than 3.7. For example, pickles, grapefruit, citrus juices, etc. comes under this category. So these are the classification of canned foods uh, based on the pH. What is the significance of a pH based classification? So why this uh, classification is important is that uh, it is uh, proven that in the case of high acid food, foods, uh, no spore forming pathogens can survive. When we are canning high acid foods, uh, we, we are sure that no spore forming pathogens can survive. So severe heat processing is not required in the case of high acid foods. For example, the temperature can be less than 100 degrees Celsius. Because any uh, mild heat tolerant microorganisms are generally destroyed at a temperature range of 90 to 95 degrees Celsius. So around 100 degrees Celsius or below, just below 100 degrees Celsius can be used for uh, canning or preserving high acid foods. So there is also different kinds of acid tolerant bacteria are also there which can survive acidic conditions like lactobacillus are there and uh, their spores. But what happens is the lactobacillus, they are only spoilage bacteria. So they can survive these temperatures of 100 degrees Celsius or more than 100 degrees Celsius. But the advantage of a high acid food is that there is no pathogenic microorganisms which can survive at that low pH. So when we are processing a particular canned food, according to their pH, we can design the severity of the processes, which is going to significantly reduce the heat or energy requirements as well as the processing time. So that is the significance of pH. So only in the case of low acid foods, we require to concentrate on the most severe uh, heat processing or thermal processing conditions need to be followed. In the case of low acid foods, there is going to be certain target organisms. Main target organism is Clostridium botulinum, as you know. It is uh, one of the most heat resistant of food poisoning organisms, and uh, but it is inhibited below pH of 4.5. So if you reduce the pH to 4.5, uh, this Clostridium botulinum cannot survive. So high acid and acid foods, they are free from Clostridium botulinum, high acid and acid foods. So no pressure canning is required and water, water bath pasteurization will do. In the case of high acid foods, we need not go to thermal sterilization or pasteurization conditions will do that. So that is why we should be clear about the target microorganisms. And also another target organism is Geobacillus sterothermophilus. It is a target spoilage microorganism. Uh, it it, it uh, causes a particular spoilage known as flat sore spoilage. But, yeah, but it is more heat resistant than Clostridium botulinum, but the targeted heat treatment for uh, Geobacillus serothermophilus uh, will result in overcooking of the food. So since it is only a spoilage microorganism, uh, less importance is given to Geobacillus serothermophilus because the presence of Geobacillus serothermophilus is limited or controlled by maintaining proper hygienic conditions, raw material quality, etc. So we cannot target the Geobacillus uh, serothermophilus because it is, since it is more heat resistant than Clostridium botulinum, it will result in the overcooking of the food and uh, significant nutritional loss. So even though it is a target spoilage microorganisms, it is not a target pathogenic microorganisms or target toxic microorganisms. So Geobacillus avoided by hygienic uh, handling practices and rapid cooling. So that previous session we discussed about the significance of the rapid cooling process up to 35 degrees Celsius. It is to control Geobacillus thermophilus, which is thermophilic in nature, while uh, the Clostridium botulinum is mesophilic. Common spoilage bacteria found in canned food or canning technology can be generally classified based on the spore forming capacity such as non-spore forming bacteria, both anaerobic and aerobic and also non-spore forming bacteria such as yeast, molds and others. So many kind of thermophilic and mesophilic uh, microorganisms uh, have the capacity to uh, form spores, uh, thermotolerant spores or endospores. 
which can uh, tolerate a higher level of temperature than their uh, normal uh, tolerance limit or uh, normal ideal range of temperature. So, this condition is called a spore forming bacteria. The spore formation, it's like what happens is that this bacteria when confronted with uh, non-ideal uh, survival conditions or uh, environmental conditions, which is non-ideal for them or extreme environmental conditions like high heat, uh, pressure, uh, pH differences, etc. Some of the mesophilic or uh, thermophilic spore forming bacteria can convert and uh, transform into a spore form. If they transform into a spore form, it's a non-vegetative form. So it will have more resistance because they will expel all the water because in the spore uh, there is no water present. So water is not available for uh, participating in the coagulation of cell protein. So in order to heat to affect the protein or uh, the bacterial cell protein, water is required. The heat, heat induced uh, proteolysis or denaturation to hap happen, water is an essential component. So what happens is that this spore, while uh, the bacteria is converting or transforming into spore, the water in the cells is completely expelled. So basically water is not available for participating in coagulation of cell protein, which gives the bacterial spore a higher heat resistance. And also heat resistance is also due to the presence of dipycholinic acid or DPA. So a normal endospore will have around 5 to 15 percentage of DPA. So which is 2 to 10 times more uh, formed by 2 to 10 times more calcium uh, in the form of than vegetative cells. So the calcium is also very important uh, in the case of spore formation. So a normal endospore will have around 5 to 15 percent DPA and also 2 to 10 times more calcium than vegetative form. So it will increase the heat resistance. So it is basically depending upon calcium and DPA ratio. As the calcium and DPA ratio increases, the heat resistance also increases. So what happens is that once the favorable condition return, what happens is that the, this vegetative cell, this calcium and DPA uh, is released and this calcium and DPA ratio is falls down and eventually the heat resistance also comes down and the bacterial or the spore will convert into a vegetative cell which is capable of reproduction. So this is the, the mechanism behind the spore formation is various spore forming bacteria. And this spore forming bacteria can also classified as thermophilic spore forming bacteria, mesophilic spore forming bacteria, non spore forming bacteria and then yeast and molds. In the case of thermophilic spore forming bacteria, they result in three types of spoilage in canned foods in the thermophilic range. Thermophilic range temperature is around 43 degrees Celsius and above. It is basically flat source spoilage, uh, then there is thermophilic anaerobic spoilage and thermophilic anaerobic sulphide spoilage. So these are the different kinds of spoilage caused by the thermophilic spore forming bacteria. In the case of flat source spoilage or thermophilic aerobic microorganisms, so there is a different class of organisms or different species of microorganisms there. The famous one is basically the main one is Geobacillus stereothermophilus which causes flat source spoilage. And there is also Bacillus coagulans, uh, Bacillus uh, thermoacidurans and other kind of microorganisms. And also thermophilic anaerobic spoilage microorganisms are also present. And also thermophilic anaerobic spoilage micro microorganisms are also present. And also thermophilic anaerobic sulphide spoilage microorganisms like the desulfur motomaculum nigrificans like you know like uh, that kind of microorganisms are also present. So the, basically there are three categories of thermophilic spore forming bacteria that we need to be concerned about. It is flat source spoilage microorganisms, thermophilic anaerobic spoilage microorganisms and thermophilic anaerobic sulphide spoilage microorganisms. In the case that uh, actually we discussed that uh, thermophilic aerobic bacteria is there, for example, Bacilli is one of the thermophilic uh, aerobic bacteria. It is a gram positive rod shaped bacteria. They are a group of bacteria that can cause uh, flat source spoilage. The main characteristic of the flat source spoilage, as we discussed, is that there is no gases produced. And also there are proteolytic and also you know like uh, carbohydrate uh, sacrolytic microorganisms are there, uh, like different kinds of microorganisms are present. So there is also carbohydrate degradation in the case of bacilli there is also carbohydrate degradation is also happening and carbohydrate is uh, degraded into acid and without the protection of gases. For example stereothermophilus was there. Thermophilic anaerobic spore formers in low acid food are also present but they can cannot grow less than uh, 5 pH and around 65 degrees Celsius. So these are the various uh, characteristics of the thermophilic aerobic bacteria and also contain lactic acid form uh, of bacterial coagulans is there. There are different kinds of bacterial coagulants, uh, bacteria is there, uh, gram positive, it is a basically gram positive bacteria, rod shaped bacteria, spore forming bacteria is there. 
Uh, it is also a spore forming bacteria and it is mainly targets acid foods with a pH less than 4.2. As for example, it is a bacillus coagulans, this is a main organism which causes spoilage in the case of tomato sauce. And it can survive around uh, ideal temperatures around 30 to 50 degrees Celsius. And, and also there is bacillus thermoacid urans which is also targeting acid foods. It is also aerobic in nature. In the case of thermophilic anaerobic spoilage bacteria, they, they are characterized with the production of hydrogen and carbon dioxide. That is why they are, like, they are also known as sour fermentation, which sour fermentation bacteria which produce acid plus gas. They are targeting medium acid canned foods. And also they are also a category of obligate anaerobes like or, and thermophilic in nature. And there is also thermoanaerobacterium thermosacrolyticum, which was previously called as Clostridium thermosacrolyticum can survive in a pH range of 6 to 8.5 and a temperature of 35 to 69 degrees Celsius. They can produce a saccharolytic enzymes and they are basically sugar reducing bacteria. There is also thermo, thermo anaerobacter hydrophilus and other thermophilic anaerobic sulphide spoilage bacteria are there which is gram negative and also it is an obligate anaerobe spore forming bacteria and it also targets low acid foods with uh, spores are less resistant to heat compared to other organisms. Basically a flat container because uh, H2S production, even though it produces uh, hydrogen sulphide, it is generally absorbed by the food. So generally the containers are flat. And also, but uh, it is produces rotten egg order because of the sulphide, hydrogen sulphide production. And also hydrogen sulphide and iron can react to form iron sulphide blackening also can be caused by this bacteria. And there is also desulfotomaculum nigrificans which produce sulphide stinker spoilage. It is also a sulphide producing bacteria. The another category of uh, microorganisms uh, which uh, are uh, targeting the case of can processing or canning technology is that mesophilic spore forming bacteria are there. Mesophilic spoilage can occur due to under processing uh, because insufficient heat treatment results in the survival of mesophilic uh, clostridium and bacillus spores. They can germinate and grow to cause spoilage after processing. So this, uh, this needs to be considered. So there is uh, different kinds of mesophilic clostridium species are there. Clostridium species are basically of two types. One is proteolytic bacteria is or saccharolytic bacteria is there. So mesophilic clostridium species which comes under proteolytic or putrefactive anaerobes are clostridium botulinum, clostridium putrefacients, clostridium bifermentans and clostridium sporogenous. In the case of the saccharolytic clostridium species, clostridium butyricum and clostridium pasteurianum is uh, two, two kinds of bacteria which are saccharolytic in nature. In the case of mesophilic bacillus species, there are different species like bacillus subtilis, bacillus mesentricus, bacillus polymixa and bacillus macerans. In the case of mesophilic spore forming bacteria, their ideal temperature range is around 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. There are also uh, proteolytic microorganisms which are producing hydrogen sulphide, ammonia etc. and also saccharolytic microorganisms are there which uh, reduces sugar and carbohydrates which producing volatile uh, acids and also such as butyric acid, uh, hydrogen and carbon dioxide as well. There are other microorganisms such as uh, Clostridium bifermentans uh, which are proteolytic and putrefactive. Clostridium sporogenes is there but in the case of Clostridium sporogenes there is a strain called PA3679. It is used uh, for the you know, thermo thermal studies in the case of because uh, so Clostridium sporogenes PA3679 has the same characteristic similarities uh, to Clostridium botulinum. So that is why it can be used, but it does not have the toxic nature of Clostridium botanum. It is comparatively safe to handle Clostridium sporogenes, but it has all the thermobacterial uh, properties or thermobacterial characteristics of Clostridium botanum. So thermobacterial studies involving Clostridium botanum, uh, this uh, PA3679 strain of uh, Clostridium sporogenes is used in the case of such studies because of the safety concerns. Why the PA3679 is basically it is putrefactic anaerobic strain. And there is also mesophilic bacillus species is also there. They are targeting low acid canned food such as bacillus subtilis and bacillus meristricus. Uh, they target seafood, meat, milk, etc. Bacillus polymixa and bacillus macerans uh, targets fruits, vegetables, etc. So, so mesophilic spores are less resistant than thermophilic spores. So in the case of thermal resistance also this characteristic difference is there. In the case of mesophilic spores are generally considered as less resistant than th uh, thermophilic spores. So thermophilic spores are more resistant. So that is why the, the thermophilic microorganisms which are more, mostly spoilage microorganisms are not targeted. But uh, mesophilic uh, like you know pathogenic microorganisms are more targeted. There are also non-spore forming bacteria. Thermoduric non-spore forming bacteria are enterococcus for example. Enterococcus is an example. 
Enterococcus facialis and Enterococcus faecium is uh, one of the examples, few of the examples. And it's also Microbacterium, there's also Streptococcus thermophilus and some species of Micrococcus and Lactobacillus is also comes under this category. And Pseudomonas uh, are the Micrococcus bacteria, the Flavobacterium, Proteus and, that, and uh, there are also other kinds of microorganisms that which can cause spoilage in leaked canned foods. The orange juice can be spoiled by Lactobacillus plantarum uh, is there, then Mobilis is there, Lactobacillus brevis, etc. Canned vegetables and fruits are spoiled by uh, different kinds of other bacteria which is able to grow under high acid conditions. So, these are some of the known spore forming bacteria which uh, probably affects the canned food as a post process spoilage. And there is also yeast and molds in the part of post process spoilage which can affect the can. Mold species like Aspergillus, uh, species of Penicillium, etc. Different kinds of uh, mold species are also there which can grow in uh, jellies and canned fruits with sugar concentration up to 67 percentage. The most common genera of heat resistant molds are Bisoclamis, uh, Neostroia, and uh, Toleromyces. U Penicillium, these are some of the most common genera of heat resistant molds. Torulopsis species of yeast are also present which can cause blowing or uh, different kinds of bulging or gaseous spoilage on sweetened condensed milk which is not heat processed, properly heat processed. And also different species can also cause uh, this kind of uh, uh, yeast can cause the spoilage in canned and lemon and which grows at a pH of 2.5. So high, even on high acid foods these kind of yeast can grow. These non spore forming bacteria survive due to very mild heat treatment uh, or uh, as like you know like pasteurization and leakage of the cans like post process spoilage. And these kind of bacteria or non spore forming bacteria surviving at mild heat treatments are known as thermodurics. Acid forming uh, like lactobacillus can be present in under processed tomato products, it can be present in tomato products, peas and other fruits can cause spoilage. Also heterofermentative lactobacillus which produce carbon dioxide can also spoilage uh, these kind of food products and swell the cans. So it is basically this presence of non spot forming bacteria indicates the presence of leakage. It either it indicates the presence of leakage or some kind of post process spoilage. In the case of orange juice, so this kind of Lactobacillus plantarum, uh, Lactobacillus mobilis etc. is found. And also Lactob Lactobacillus brevis is also found and also canned vegetables and fruits, different kinds of uh, bacteria or yeast and molds are also. This kind of non-spore forming bacteria can spoil this kind of canned vegetables, fruits etc. The presence of yeast and molds generally indicates post-process spoilage. Post-process spoilage generally means under-processing, leakage, recontamination, poor evacuation, etc. So fermentative yeast are some of the common organisms found in the canned foods. In the case of canned fruits and milk, etc., they are found. They can swell the canned because they some of these fermentative yeast can produce carbon dioxide. And also film forming yeast are also there, surface of the pickled meat, they can produce spoilage of the surface of the pickled meat, some film forming yeast. Molds are also most common in home canned food because high sugar content, they can survive high sugar content of up to 70 percentage. And also aspergillus ripens are there, formation of uh, different kinds of button like uh, structures on the surface of the sweet condensed milk. And also uh, fulva species are also there, they can survive up to 90 degrees Celsius for one minute, this kind of pasteurization condition they can survive. They are commonly found in canned fruit because uh, they can actively participate in pectin degradation. Heat resistant molds are there which can produce aerospores, survive up to 85 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes and also they can, they can also produce mycotoxins. So some of these yeast and molds can also produce mycotoxins which can eventually result in food poisoning. Thank you.